Hey everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if painting your house in the widest paint in the world is better than air conditioning. So I've seen several news stories where cities have been painting their streets white and housetops white in order to reflect some sunlight so that they don't get as hot. This is the hottest part of the city of Los Angeles. Councilman Bob Blumenfield is referring to Jordan Street in Canoga Park. The hot sun beats down on the, on the black asphalt, creates this heat island effect, and ultimately we are all the victims of that. The hope though is that by reflecting more light, the lighter pavement coating will keep the air and the surrounding street cooler and release less heat into our neighborhoods. City officials say not only will the new coating help save money on air conditioning, but also will benefit in other ways. And I've also seen a news story where scientists created a super white paint and they claim that if you paint your house in it, it's just as good as using air conditioning. So I have two identical houses here. One of the houses I'm gonna leave just unpainted. The other one I'm gonna paint with white 2.0. Now this is the whitest paint available on the market today. Now this white 2.0 is pretty cool stuff. It's 50% brighter than the best available white acrylic paint on the market. Also, it reflects over 99.5% of all the wavelengths in the visible light and even the UV spectrum. This actually even reflects more light than a mirror. Only a mirror does it with something called specular reflection, so it retains the angle of incidence so you can actually see a reflection. But white paint like this reflects it diffusively, so it spreads out the light at all angles, so it reflects more of it, but you can't see a reflection in it. First, let's paint one of the houses white. Okay, so I've painted it with some primer already. Now let's do the white paint. Okay, here's our final product. It's all dry now. A perfectly white house versus a regular wood house. So before I start this test, I'm gonna put tape over these windows here so the heat can't escape as air out the windows because the warm air will rise and it'll come out this hole here. Okay, so I've positioned the thermocouple at the same spot. They both go back around three inches about into the center of the house here at the height of the window. To simulate the sunlight, I've got 400 watt incandescent bulbs. So I've got this set up now. You can see already the white house is a little bit cooler than the wood house. The white house is at 60.1 degrees Fahrenheit and the wooden house is at 60.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to turn on my incandescent bulbs and let's see how the temperature changes. Three, two, one. So they're staying almost completely matched now. Now the heating from these lights isn't very strong. It's slightly warm, but not extremely warm here. Okay, it's been 10 minutes now. Now surprisingly, the white 2.0 house is a little bit hotter. It's at 68.4 degrees Fahrenheit and the wooden house is at 66.7 degrees Fahrenheit. So this could be because you can see the thermocouple in the white house is a little bit higher than on the wooden house. So the hot air is rising a little bit. So that may be the temperature difference we're seeing. They both went up in temperature around seven or eight degrees, but not a huge difference between them. It might be because this actually isn't very hot light. There's not a lot of light shining on it. It's not very bright. So the air is heating up around it. It's kind of warm air. So all of the heating might actually be coming from the air itself and not from the light hitting it. So I think we need a brighter light. Let's try to get this more like sunlight. Okay, now let's really heat these up. This is the world's brightest flashlight. It gives off a ton of heat. If you hold it next to something, it can actually start it on fire. So let's do 100,000 lumens. Three, two, one. So the camera's gonna auto adjust for the light here, but it's actually super bright blinding white light right now. There's the fan kicking on because it's so hot. I have this right in between both houses. Shine out in the front of the houses. So I did this for about five more minutes. I had to cycle the flashlight on and off so it, the flashlight didn't get too hot. Okay, now we've got between the two, the upper house is at 73.2 degrees, the lower one 67.8. It actually got a little bit cooler under that intense light. 
So once we turn up the light a lot, the white house actually does much better than the wooden house. It got up to a six degree Fahrenheit temperature difference between the two. So look how hot the one on the right is. The wooden house, the roof is up to like 30 degrees Celsius. The white one, the roof is like 22 degrees Celsius, a little bit warm, but not much. So you can see it between these two tests at moderate lighting, there's virtually no difference between a house that's painted with ultra bright white paint and a house that's not painted at all. But when we really increase the intensity to a hundred thousand lumen, so that's as bright or brighter than direct sunlight on the house, you can see that we did get a temperature difference between the two. The white one stayed a few degrees cooler than the wooden one. So you definitely aren't going to get these huge differences of 20 or 30 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit just by painting your house white. It's going to be a few degrees difference in intense sunlight. Because no matter what, it doesn't matter what color your house is painted, the conduction of the hot air on your house is going to be the same no matter what color your house is painted. The only type of heat that the color of your house can affect is the radiative heat. So if it's white, it can reflect the visible light so the visible light can't turn into heat and heat up your house a little bit more. But these ultra white objects are really good at reflecting radiation. You can see that when I use my solar scorcher here that can light wood on fire on contact, when I stick my spectralon under it, this spectralon is the whitest material in the world, even whiter than white 2.0. You can see that it doesn't even heat it up. I can touch it and it's not even hot. So you can actually see that blue divot there, that kind of blue hole in the center. That's where the spectralon is. And that's the spot that's not heating up at all. You actually don't see a rise in temperature. So it looks like even though the surrounding area is getting upwards of 200 degrees Celsius pretty quickly, there's no rise in temperature on the spectralon. The block's starting to melt, but not the spectralon. The spectralon isn't hot at all but the block below it is completely melted. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.